International Ministries. want to say a great big howdy to all you people in so many different countries. You know we have challenges all over the world, but God is great. God is mighty. He is strong. He's so much bigger than we ever imagined that he could be. That's why we are talking about Holy Spirit. God the Son, God the Father, but God the Holy Spirit. It's the kingdom reign. It's a time of kingdom reign, and Holy Spirit is reigning as well. How many of you know that we need power today? We're not strong enough for what we're facing. We need power. So do we use the power of drugs? Do we use the power of, of alcohol, of, of rebellion? You know, some people are fueled by hatred. That's not the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, of course, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of heaven is kindness. The kingdom of heaven is love. The love of God that covers everything, that is stronger than death. And so we press in not to what's happening around us, not to the things that the enemy is throwing at us like hailstones of, of darkness, hatred and division and, and violence. No, no. What we do is we press into the kingdom, we press into the Holy Spirit, and as we press into the Holy Spirit, we have Holy Spirit's power, which is greater than anything the world can imagine. You know, I've, I've heard bad news. I know you have too, bad, 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 all bad news. <laughs> but you know what? My husband and I were walking uh, in the morning in the heat of the Texas sun, and I noticed a piece of paper on the side of the road. It was down in the ditch. And I said, oh, what, you know, because we were in a nice neighborhood that usually doesn't have um, paper in the ditch. You know, they usually pick up everything. And so I went over. Now, you have to remember that I am... Uh, one who was raised on the front pew of the Baptist church, so I know every hymn that's ever been written, and I have degrees in music, so I know music, and the first thing I noticed was, number one, it was, uh, it was a, a hymn, it was music, and so I went over and I picked it up in the ditch, and it was a piece of paper, I know you can't see this, but it's a, it was a piece of paper out of a hymnal, and it said, I have good news for you, <laughs> it was a hymn that I had never heard before. And I believe that the angels put that right there as a message from God to me and to you that he has good news. He doesn't have bad news. He doesn't have terrible, you're lying, dirty dogs. He has good news. He has news that uplifts. He has news that lifts up our head. He has news that puts joy in our heart. That's why they call it the good news of the gospel. The gospel is good news. So you and I, we need to begin to look at not the things which are seen, not the things which are heard in the airwaves, but the things which are unseen because they're eternal, because they're immortal, and because they're good news. So we're doing a series on the Holy Spirit. This is the fourth in a series. So if you're following us on many of the different streams, Roku, um, on, on YouTube, you can come on our YouTube, Facebook, you can see the other uh, things about the Holy Spirit. We've got one through three so far. But today we're going to talk about transfer of power. Now, I think it's really interesting that when Jesus, the most powerful being in the universe, when he came to earth, he came as a little baby. Now, what is less threatening? Can you think of anything that's less threatening than a little baby? Well, when he came in, what entered really besides a little baby? Power. Power entered the earth. Power such as the world had never seen. But he came in the guise of sweetness and gentleness and tenderness because that's what he also is. Sweet and gentle and tender. He says, I'm lowly. I'm meek and lowly of heart. So 
quickly in his life, he began to show power. And so the religious leaders, you know, religion, religion, it, the Bible says that a form of religion denies the power thereof, oftentimes. But the religious leaders saw him heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead. And instead of saying, oh, this is so wonderful, they said, by what power? By what authority do you do this? Now, see, they noticed there was power, and they noticed there was authority. But because they didn't do it themselves, they were jealous and they were suspicious. And so we need to begin to, to look at what power we operate in. He blasted into earth with supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. So the Father sent the Son, and the Son sent the Holy Spirit, and both Jesus and the Holy Spirit gave it to the disciples and all the believers. So we have that same power that came in in the little form of a little baby and that left with a blast of resurrection power. And so we have power over drugs. We have power over alcohol. We have power over hatred. We have power over fear. By the power in us, kingdom of heaven is in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive power. This is when Jesus was talking. This is when the disciples were, were talking. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And they were saying, so then you can be disciples everywhere because of that power. Not because you have a duty to tell the gospel, but because of the power. So the, the Greek word power means ability, efficiency, and might. Today, you and I, we need ability, efficiency, and might. Jesus was the empowerer. Now we are those who move by that power, and we are the empowerers. We are the light bearers. We're the ones who carry what Jesus came to bring and what Holy Spirit came and gave every believer that wants it. We have that power to fill the earth with the glory and the knowledge of the Lord of hosts. So Jesus came and stood in the midst of the disciples, and it says he breathed on them. Well, in our other, other teachings about the Holy Spirit, it says that the Holy Spirit is the breath of life. He is the breath of life. So Holy Spirit was G with Jesus when he breathed on the Holy Spirit breathed on the disciples, and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So in all of these teachings, we're saying, you have to receive it. You can't just, you know, wish it were there, and then suddenly, you know, you have to receive it, and then you have to release it. So when you see something that is unjust, release Holy Spirit. Don't release anger. Don't let that be a hook into you to be in the same nature that they're releasing. Don't, don't be hooked in by anger, hooked in by violence. Hooked in, don't do that. What we need to do is we receive Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We drink from the river and we release Holy Spirit. We receive it and we release it. So the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 4.20, is not in talk. It's not just in talk but it's in power. So the Word and the power and the Spirit operate together. The kingdom is not just love, joy, and peace, but the kingdom is power. There's power in the kingdom. And besides that, peace, we all think of peace as kind of, you know, the laid back, oh, you know, but peace is not passive. Peace is active. So you and I, we return violence with peace. We return hatred with love. And the love and the peace has more power than anything that the enemy can release to us. So the days that we are in, yes, they're daunting. Yes, darkness is trying to cover the earth. But the light of the Holy Spirit rises within us with new illumination. So we press into the power. We press into the kingdom. We press into power and light. So 
if we know God, we know power. I don't know about you, but I have a desperate passion to know God. I have a desperate passion. The more I know Him, the more I know that I don't know, and the more I want to know. So we have to let him put that hunger in us. And if we, we receive Holy Spirit and we release Holy Spirit, then we're going to have a passion to know him. The, the scripture says the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power. That's what I want to know. Ephesians 1.19. That's what I want to know. I want to know the workings of his mighty strength. And then Psalm 27, one of my favorite scriptures. We, we've asked one thing, one thing to require, to gaze, to seek. We have to gaze upon him day after day after day. We have to gaze upon him. And that scripture says to gaze upon the beauty, upon the sweetness, upon the delightful loveliness of the Lord and to meditate on him. Because, see, there's a transference of power that goes on. When we get into his presence, the scripture says we're changed from glory to glory to glory into his image. Well, how does that change happen? That change happens by transference. Because we gaze upon him, we meditate upon him, we receive him, and then we release him. And as it goes through us, it changes us. Our DNA changes. We inquire. We require him. You know, the, the, the God, God is always the same. He never changes. But we are growing in God. So we have to continue to embrace more and more and more of the aspects of him in us. We can't just take what we knew 15 years ago, 15 days ago, or even 15 minutes ago. If we're progressing in God, then we need to be open to change as he shows us to change. We're in a critical time, and in a critical time, we need power. And to have power, we have to change. We have to change. So illness can be changed, can be, can be given. The researchers say that we can, we can get ill just by our thoughts. Thoughts are powerful. So you and I have to let the transference, the transformation begin to happen in us as we gaze upon the Lord. It's like a transformer in electricity. I was in a conference one time, and there was we were in a sanctuary with no windows. So, and of course, we had all the electronic instruments and everything. And so, we started the the worship, and boom, all the power went out. And we didn't find out until later that a transformer went out, and it was a 15 mile radius all the way around the church. And so. We didn't know what to do, so the first thing we did was we lit the menorah. <laughs> there was a menorah there in the church, and we lit the candles, and we began to worship and pray, and we began to release the power of the Holy Spirit, and the, the instruments, we had a violin, we had a flute, we had a saxophone. We began to play, and we began to sing, and we began to worship, and, and we, had a, we had a powerful prophet with us, and he began to release the word of the Lord, and I began to prophesy, and it, it was like a normal <laughs> two-and-a-half to three-hour service and the, 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 in the dark, but with the lights that we had lit. And so all of a sudden, I felt like it was time to end the service, and I walked up, to the pulpit with the dead microphone. <laughs> I walked up to the pulpit and I said a prayer and I said amen and the instant I said amen, boom, the lights came on. It was so sudden that people screamed. <laughs> and we found out that the lights had been on in the rest of the church all along, but the, not in the sanctuary. And they couldn't figure it out. They had been scrambling everywhere trying to find out why the power wasn't on in the sanctuary. So I am telling you what, transformers are important. And you and I are transformers. We take that power and we disperse it to everywhere that it's needed all over the world. With the, with the streaming devices, with all of the technology that's available. Let me tell you, I've been on a sharp learning curve. <laughs> I used to have a phone that I didn't know how to get my password off of, and I, I didn't know that you could just call them and tell them. <laughs> 
But now I have a smartphone and I have a smart iPad and I have, you know, but we are transformers and we have to understand how power works and how power is dispersed. And we must disperse Holy Spirit in this hour. Our lives depend on it. Our nations depend on it. The world depends on it. We must have Holy Spirit. We must know Father. Father introduced us to Jesus, the Son. Jesus, the Son, introduced us to Father and glorified Him. Jesus, the Son, introduced us to Holy Spirit and glorified Him. And they worked together. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then Holy Spirit came and Jesus said, I'm sending you someone just like me. And so they act as one. And we must know all of them, just like that little transformer up on that pole, had to know how to fix that electricity to send it out We have to know how to receive that power to send it out. And so worship is one of those ways that we stock up on that power. The scripture says, Psalm 21, 13, Be exalted, Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Now, I grew up singing the song, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. The angels are falling before the power of God. We don't just praise Jesus because he saved us. We praise the power of the Lord. The scripture says it. Praise his power. Praise the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the heavens of his power. That's Psalm 150 verse 1. Worship is a choice. Gazing and meditating on Him is a choice. It's a lifestyle, not just once on Easter and once on Christmas. It's not just once on every Sunday morning or every Saturday night or whenever you have your service. We need to have a lifestyle. How many times do you eat a day? (laughs) Too many. I eat too many. (laughs) Well, that's how many times a day we need to refresh ourselves in the Word. We need to refresh ourselves in the presence of the Lord. We need to pray and we need to worship and we need to give Him glory. A famous prophet uh, prophesied over me one time, you are God's ice pick to unthaw the frozen chosen. (laughs) I thought that sounded so neat till I started thinking about the ice pick that I grew up using to, 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 uh, uh, to you know, the ice, to beat up the ice and everything. That, I, that ice pick gets thrown in the drawer and it looks beat up. <laughs> so you and I, we may have a few wounds from going out. We may have, listen, Ezekiel, the Lord told Ezekiel, you're going to go whether they listen or whether they refuse to listen. And so Ezekiel went and it wasn't always to praising audiences. <laughs> but you and I, we have a mandate from God. We have a mandate. We have all power. And so that's why we seek Him and we seek His power. That's why we release Him and we release His power. I once knew um, a, a, a pastor. She was a pastor up in the northwest of the United States for probably 60 years. And she was um, a lot older than I was at the time, but I was just coming into my ministry. And I was at her home uh, the afternoon before she was going to minister, and we were chit-chatting and visiting and and she said well I've got to go stick my finger in the socket (laughs) well what she meant was she had to go she had to go plug in to the power source we have to plug in to the power source now let me tell you I travel pretty much all over the world and there are different kinds of power there's 110 110 to 120 there's 220 So if I go with my 110 appliance and I plug into a 220 outlet, what happens? (laughs) My stuff dies. I was in Russia one time and we were trying to heat up our soup and over and over and over I would plug in my little little warm up the soup thing (laughs) and it would die. And I just told everybody in my room because people would lend it to me. I was head of the team and they would bring me theirs. And I don't know, it just seemed to happen all the time over and over and over. Let me tell you, if you're, if you're moving in one level of power right now, I am telling you it is not enough because the currency of heaven 
it will change the world. But in order to change the world, we have to come in to that level of power. So we release worship. We release prayer. We release intercession. We release our testimony. We declare who He is. You are the God who does wonders. You have demonstrated your power among the people. Psalm 77, 14. You have demonstrated your power among the peoples. We're going to go out among the peoples and we're going to demonstrate His power. It's not about us. It's about who is in us. There's a, there's a song that I grew up probably when I was three, four, five years old I was singing this because that's what they were singing. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There's power. There is wonder-working power. We had a big storm and hail was coming and we have all these big windows and the hail was hitting our, our windows and, and my son was visiting and all of a sudden I turned into somebody that they didn't know. They, they, I don't think they knew me <laughs> because I was shouting at the storm, peace be still, in the name of Jesus, peace be still. And within 30 seconds the hail stopped and soon the winds begin to die down. You see, we have the same power over the storms of life that Jesus had. We have the same power over death that Jesus had. We have the same power that kills every... Listen, it kills the snakes on my property. I've told them on my property, you are not allowed on my property in the name of Jesus. No snakes, no serpientes in mi tierra. No snakes on my property. And I take authority. And whenever one or two might come in a year, they know about it. I, I say, no, you get off my property. I take authority over you. That's what God gave Adam in the beginning. He said, you will have dominion and authority and you will manage the earth and so we are transformers that have dominion and authority and God has given us all of that authority to manage the earth and it said he said in Genesis to subdue the earth and so when we see violence and when we see hatred we release that power and we release that love we release Holy Spirit because Jesus transferred it he came to earth and he took the power that he had and he transferred it to the disciples and he transferred it to the 120 through the Holy Spirit. He brought the spirit of power. He brought the spirit of truth. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And so you and I, we need to talk about that truth. We need to release that truth. Psalm 145 verse 11 says, They shall speak, they shall talk of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. We need to, instead of saying, stop doing that, you're not right, I'm right, in, instead of in, in increasing conflict by engaging into whatever's going on around us, we speak of the glory of the kingdom. We talk of the majesty of the kingdom. We talk of the power of the Lord. His scriptures have life. These scriptures, they have life. They are living. Jesus is our living peace. He's alive. Jesus is alive. The Word is alive. His Word is alive. Holy Spirit is alive in us. If you have received Jesus as your personal Savior and you have not received the Holy Spirit, it is so simple. You just say, Jesus, please, baptize me. Just like you did on the day of Pentecost. They were baptized. Power burst into that room like a mighty hurricane, it said, like a rushing wind. And suddenly, they were speaking in tongues. We have to release this tongue. This tongue, right here, this tongue, eh, that tongue is causing problems all over the world right now. People are releasing with their tongues. They are releasing death. 
The Bible says there is life and death in the tongue. And people are releasing to the, the tongues of death all over the world. The Lord says there is blessing and cursing. In the Old Testament, he said there's blessing and cursing. Choose life. Choose life. Bless. Choose life. So today, we choose life. We talk about the power. We talk about the kingdom. We talk about the love. You know, I'm a prophet, and oftentimes when I prophesy, uh, and I've taught prophets all over the world, and, and I'm a human being, and, and, you know, I miss it sometimes, and every prophet that ever lived has missed it once or twice. <laughs> and when people, you know, if they turn ugly or whatever, if they, if they don't like what Holy Spirit might be saying to them, and they come against it, you know what I do? I say, I am so sorry. I must have missed it. Please forgive me. Even if I know that it was right, even if I know we have no rights in the kingdom, it is his right. He is the righteous judge. And so you and I, we come low. We bow low. We take on humility. We come low like Jesus. He is our example. He is our, our, our brother. He is our beloved. He is our bridegroom. He is our example. And so, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray. I pray peace. I pray love. I pray joy. I pray all of the blessings of the kingdom to everyone in the sound of my voice. I pray blessing and not cursing. I say peace be to you. Peace be still. I say receive, breathe, and release, Holy Spirit. Breathe and release, Holy Spirit. Breathe and release love and release hope and release joy. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for all of the Christians and the churches all over the world as they breathe and release hope. And I pray for all of you who need to know Christ. He can save your life. He can save it. He can bring you into the joy of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Beautiful one, beautiful